Welcome back, muchachos. We're gonna do a little, uh, ex we're gonna work on our BMI calculator. And uh, we're gonna do some data validation. And uh, we're gonna make sure, one, that any field that needs information input gets the input. And then we're also gonna test to make sure they're in the right format. So for example, under height, uh, the user's gonna have to type in their height in feet and inches, and they're gonna have to write it as text uh, or they got to write it as digits, I mean, not letters. So you can't spell out the word five feet, six inches, or whatever. Okay. So we're going to ensure all of that is good before we process our BMI calculation. So in our name field, our text box, well, let's go ahead and we're going to go to our code. We already checked to make sure the name field has been entered. And there's the code that does it. We basically check to see. We check to see if when we get our text from the name text, if it's equal to an empty string, then we are gonna to wanna to notify that they left the name blank. We are going to then set the cursor in the text name box, okay? So now we're just gonna check it. And then what we wanna do now is check our, um, do the same thing for our feet text box. And I'm using the code completion on Eclipse to help out, which is always nice. So if the text feed, when we get the text equals blank, we're gonna do a very similar thing here. J option pane, show message, dialog. Now, uh, null, null means we're not, it's an empty, there's nothing there. We're not going to put this inside of another frame. Let me show you one more time what that looks like. Um, actually, I have to go all the way back here. Show, well, I'll put message dialog. You will see the, um, it says determines, parent component determines the frame in which the dialog is displayed. If uh, null, then what it's going to do is it's just going to be a pop-up window. It's not going to use a frame to stick it in. We don't really need to do that. So we're actually going to do it as a pop-up window. Null. I'm going to hit tab. takes me to the message. I'm going to put a little message here, but what I want to do is put this on the next line. And Now let's go ahead and test this out because I want to show you there's a little thing here that you might notice when you run it that you might not like. So again, we grab the focus of the text feed. So these are two if statements, okay? So the key with this is that we check here first, then we check here also. Let's go ahead and test it. So I click on here to run it, save my changes. See my window. I'm going to try not uh, to enter anything in either name or height and see what happens. Here it is. I click submit. Notice it says you left the name blank and it says you left the feet field blank. And now the cursor's here. I wanted the, to deal with name first, then deal with it. The problem is because I did those little if statements, it checked this, gave me the message, then it checked here also. So what we're going to do instead of um, just going on to the next check, if we trigger this and they need to deal with it, we're gonna get out of this action perform. We're gonna stop trying to execute more code. And the way you do that is to return out of this particular, um, sorry, this particular method, which is action perform. So after we grab focus, we're gonna write return. And that returns us out of the method. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now watch the difference. I click submit. You left the name blank. Now that's the only message I get. My cursor's in here. And I click submit, and it left the feet field blank. That message is probably pretty lame. But what if I put five feet like this and click submit? Well, it, it seems to like it. But I don't because we can't calculate BMI with characters. It's just not going to happen. So now what we need to do is we need to deal with this 
error. And in order to do that, we are going to try to take the text. And actually, let's look at the design here. We're going to try to grab what's here and then see if we can convert it to a number. If we're able to convert it to a number, we're good and we'll do so. If we can't, we need to notify the user and allow them to re-enter that information. So let's go back to our code. Now to do this, actually before I even mention that, I want to mention we're going to do the same thing not only for height, but we're going to do it for weight. And we're going to deal with inches a little bit differently. If they leave it blank, we'll count it as zero. And then if they write it as text, we're going to have a problem. And so we're going to change that. Because there are three areas we're going to do this, what we are going to do is we're going to write a method that will tell us whether the text itself happens to be, uh, and whether we can convert it to a number or not. So let's go back here to our code. Now to do this, we are going to have to write our new method. And let's talk about methods. Okay, This whole thing, the BMI calculator, is a class called BMI Calc. Okay. This is our class. Our class can do things. So we have different methods. One is main. And then there's this thing, BMI calc, which is, this is what's called the constructor. This is what creates the calculator. Okay. Notice this is the same name as our class, BMI calc. Okay. But this is, we have to put our method outside of here. I have to go all the way down here. And if you didn't know where that was, you can collapse it clicking the little minus sign. Oops, wrong one. Go up here, minus sign, and there we're out of it. Now, before I continue, I must give credit where credit is due. Edu4java.com has a user interface input data validation. And I admit, I get this code is what we're going to use. Okay. I wanted to find a good example without me having to just dig around and make mistakes. So this is where the credit comes from for this next part. Okay. So we create our method outside of this, the constructor. I scroll down here. Okay. Just the key here is there's one last curly bracket. Go before it. So you're on this line. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a, um, we're going to make a method private private means that only the bmi calc only this class can access and use it static means this belongs to the bmi calculator method it's not a particular labels method or whatever static just means it belongs to the class uh, and so we'll get into that in a later tutorial on object-oriented programming um, we're going to make this um, a boolean Boolean, what that means is this is the return type. We're actually going to return a value. And in this case, we're going to return true or false. Either it is a number or it is not a number. So we make that Boolean. And then we write is number. Now, this is standard formatting for a method. It starts with a lowercase letter, two words, is number. And it kind of almost reads like English, right? Is it a number? We need a string, first of all, because our text fields get string as input, right? So we need to take that string, and so we're just going to call it uh, n for number. And we're going to have to return either a true or a false. But in order to do this, we need to see if we can parse um, that string into an integer. And this could cause a number format exception, so we're going to use exception handling. What that is is we're going to try to convert it. Okay, it's the first thing we try. And we're going to use the integer class. And by the way, this is a static method that belongs to the integer class called parse it. We put in an n. If we are able to parse that n as a number, it is a number, so we are going to return true. Just like so. And then we're going to try to catch our number format exception. Give E, it's a very common name naming convention or an exception. So if we have a number format except exception, we're going to just return false. 
Now, at this point, you notice that it was red up here for a while if you were paying attention. Red means there was an error with this method. Now, I just kept coding because I knew that when I was done, it wouldn't have an error. It would just have this warning sign. If you click on the warning sign, you will see, um, if you hover over it, where is it? There. Um, the main one here is basically stating that it's never used. Sorry, it, there we go. One more time. There. The bottom line, the method is number from the type BML calc is never used locally. Well, we'll use it in a moment. So we're going to run this is number. It's either going to be true or false, so we're going to use it as a check. So now we have to go all the way up. Sorry, you're going to lose this. You might have to take a screenshot or pause for a moment, make sure you get the code. So we go back up. We're in our action perform. We're at the button. We first of all make sure that the feet is not empty. Now we're going to do another check. If. Now we're going to check, is it a number? Is what a number? Text feet. Okay. If it is a number, then we have success, right? So what we're going to need to do is, I, I just realized, we're going to need to capture that information in a variable. I haven't created the variable yet. Oops. So let's scroll up a little. Let's get this thing arranged so you can see a little bit better. So inside of here, I'm going to create our variable. Feet, inches, total inches. Oops. Now, I don't know about weight. Should it be an integer or should it be a double? We'll make it a, an integer. But then we're going to make the BMI a double. Okay. So there's all of our variables that we need. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay. If it is a number, we're successful, then we're going to put feet equals, and uh, it's integer dot try parse, parse int, excuse me. And then it's txt feet dot get text, like so. So if we're successful, we now store it in the feet variable. Now our else, so if it's not a number, it's going to return a false, so we capture it with our else block. Now we're going to do a J option pane. Then, after we show the message di dialog box, we're going to also get grab the focus. And then we're also going to return. And that returns us out of the submit button. So you might want to pause on this code. So here we're using the is number now. So if it is a number, we then convert it. Otherwise, we inform the user they did it wrong. Let's go ahead and test it, see if it works. Let's test everything so far. We we'll start with an empty form. Click Submit. We get our message on the name. Let's we'll put Jill for now. We left the feet field blank. I'm going to write out six. Submit. Please enter feet as a number. Cursor's right there. Number six. Submit. Now, uh, at this point, we're good. We didn't cause any more pop-ups. Uh, and in the next video, we'll finish this error um, We'll finish all the validation out for the rest of the fields. Sorry, the little window is going to pop up for a moment. I'll move it out of the way as soon as it does.